So hi friends, I am Dr. Swapna Chekuri from Hyderabad Women and Fertility Center. Welcome to my channel. So today we will be just discussing about uh, when to go for IVF. So many individuals they keep on asking uh, when we have to go, what's the ideal age and uh, now what's the indication for IVF. So basically you need to understand when a couple come to us for evaluation, we usually check from both the sides, uh, husband and uh, wife side. So both the partners has to be evaluated and then depending on the factors we usually advise them to go for IVF. So basically among ladies we usually see whether the uterus is fine, uterus lining is okay and regarding the tubes. Suppose if both the tubes are blocked then those are the candidates who has to go for IVF or else if the uterus is absent by birth like which we call it as Mullerian agenesis. Usually out of 5000 one individual will have no uterus at birth. So in those uh, individuals also we usually advise to go for uh, IVF that is through surrogacy. So that is one thing. And the second thing is uh, coming to the ovaries, uh, again uh, depending on the PCOD like ovaries are normal or is there any PCOD or hormonal imbalance. If the PCOD is uh, severe enough, if they are not responding to medication or injections then those are the candidates who have to go for IVF. Third thing is uh, if at all any uh, problem with the uterus itself like suppose if the uterus lining is very thinned out uh, and like you know resistant thin endometrium or if there is Asherman syndrome where there are a lot of additions within the cavity of the uterus then these are the candidates who have to go for IVF through surrogacy that's one thing and then uh, regarding the other factors like any congenital anomalies with the uterus then uh, unexplained infertility like you know both male and female partners everything will be normal but still they are unable to conceive so those are the candidates who have to go for IVF and uh, some ladies like you know at an early age we usually advise for IVF that is uh, individuals with the low reserve low AMH levels and uh, if the endometriosis if they are having severe endometriosis then these are the candidates we usually advise to go for IVF and then coming to the male partner suppose if the husband is azospermica so those candidates also we usually advise for uh, IVF like you know ICSI where uh, we can retrieve sperms uh, through the epididymis either through TISA or PISA and those sperm cells will be utilizing uh, to make the embryos so these are the candidates and then uh, uh, husbands uh, like you know male factor with uh, severe oligospermia or severe teratospermia where the morphology is very poor or the motility is very less or the sperm count is very less very low sperm count these are all the candidates who have to go for ICSI and then um, and uh, and some individuals you know by birth they'll have very very low sperm count these are the candidates who have to go for karyotyping first and then based on that whether to go for ICSI or whether to go for a, a donor sperm all these things we need to take a decision and among ladies uh, in elderly age patients also we usually advise for IVF because as we all know as age increases the ovarian reserve goes down and with the poor ovarian reserve definitely the egg quality will be affected and even if they conceive at a very later age again the chance of miscarriage will be more chances of genetic syndromes will be more and uh, that's the reason we usually advise to go for IVF in case of elderly patients and in case of cancer patients also where they need to go for chemotherapy or radiotherapy before starting the chemotherapy we usually advise the lady uh, to go for ovarian stimulation so that we can stimulate and retrieve her oocytes and will freeze it so that later on after marriage they can utilize their eggs for the pregnancy so these are all the candidates so as we uh, as we have discussed in detail recurrent IUI failures or uh, bilateral blocked fallopian tubes or some anomalies with the uterus or absent uterus elderly patients and severe PCO patients who are not responding to the treatment and severe male factor like you know asthenotetospermia or uh, azospermia so these are all candidates who have to go for IVF so uh, these are the most commonest indications for IVF so friends if you like the information if you feel the video is informative please like my video and uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, share with your friends and family members and to the needy couple thank you